Hey guys, welcome back to another computer overview and boot and whatever you want to name it because it's another computer time. Hey guys, welcome back to another computer overview, boot, whatever you want to name it. In this episode, we're going to be looking for another business computer. Last episode, I was talking about the Optiplex GX620. Today, we're going to be talking about a different one. It's another business client ad. Uh, Hey guys, welcome back to another computer overview and boot, or whatever you want to name it, because I suck at names. Anyways, today we're going to be looking at another computer that is made oriented, oriented for business, but mostly on POS systems. Now what is POS? Piece of shit? Eh, it'll depend on which models you're talking about, but no, it is, it is actually point of sale. Point of sale systems are mostly terminals super slim and they're connected to the main database and you know the deal you just scan your shit and gets you, you, know, you know it gets your bill you know like when you go when you go out for groceries it gives you the bill that's pretty much it but this one is an XPOS from I don't even know where it came from it is actually a micro mic I'm not even <sighs> yeah. nah it's proprietary motherboards anyways this this is actually some sort of a computer that you find more in a business. It's bigger than the Optiplex GX620, so it technically it is a desktop computer made for the business as well. And which one am I talking about? Here it is. The HP RP5700. Sleek, awesome, and black. So let's have a look-see. Now, because it's too dark out, I'm going to have to use the flash for that. So anyways, this machine originally shipped with a Pentium dual core inside, an E4360, I don't even know, I'm going to go check in the BIOS later. This was actually added by me, it was actually a faceplate, it, there was nothing there, another sign of a POS system, the power on and off, your hard drive, your power on, and this little, this little thing right there flips down to reveal two hidden USB 2.0 eh, ports that I can't even fit in. At the back here is some sort of a HP sticker revealing this is actually expansion for a low profile PCI Express graphics card if you so desire and two expansions for a PCI slot. Something tells me that there was once devices here they are no longer there. For USB 2.0 uh, that's a gigabit Ethernet, I believe, serial port, a 5912 volt, that's a VGA, LP parallel, keyboard and mouse, line in and out. There's no mic. Note that the microphone jack is most likely going to be the line in. And under this reveals a 5 volt or 12 volt serial port. This would be probably used for a uh, Epson scanner, I mean an Epson printer. You know, those little thing that, like a thermal printer for the bill. I'd assume something like that, or this one. I am not too sure. And of course your power supply. This power supply is out of ranging, so you don't have to worry if you go to Europe with it. Opening this computer is oh, opening this computer is not a big deal. There's a button right here, a button right here, and I'm not two-handed. Opening this computer up is not a big deal. There's a button here, a button here. You press them both together and you pull towards you, just like so. And we're inside. Inside the computer is nothing fancy of a computer, except there's four slots, excepting most likely to be up to 8 gigs of RAM. I believe this is an Intel 865 chipset. Correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't done the big research. 
Under there is the Pentium Dual Core. You can install a Core 2 Duo or a Core 2 Quad if you so desire. Power supply, toolless, but there is a latch right here, right here, and you press on it, and it goes up, revealing the, revealing the rest of the board, which there is pretty much nothing else, except a 24-pin micro plug that they use, proprietary stuff again. Here is, here are the PCI Express, 16 lane and one lane. Flip that up to reveal the um, unlock feature again toolless and this thing right here same thing just pry it up and oh, well actually I got oh yeah I know that's it yeah just pry her up oh, I'll be back well turns out I was wrong all you have to do was just to pry that out really revealing the riser board this little green tab swivels like this once the power supply is out of the way and it actually revealed more than I thought. Here is a communications card, a USB header, and another USB red header right there. On the side here, you can install two hard drives by opening this all the way like this. There's a hard drive here and a hard drive under the power supply. Compact systems like this are normally prone to have high heat. However, this this function this one, however, has a bigger fan in the back to cool the power supply. And this has a bigger has a thermally controlled fan you can control even in the BIOS to control the cooling of the CPU. The rest doesn't pretty much generates a bit of heat on the bottom, but it does not generate a tremendous amount of heat. That is, of course, I have no expansion cards inserted, therefore the, the airflow will be at maximum. So enough talking blah 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 about your little story. Let's see it in action. <clears throat> I almost forgot. This is where you put a key lock if you so desire to avoid theft. Here it is all plugged in. Let's get it to start. Alrighty, so we're speaking English today. So, this is the setup utility Compaq had before and HP still has today. This is the system information, gives you the overview. It's an E2160, there you go. 4 gigs of RAM installed. Let's go to the about. The about pretty much tells you about the BIOS and blah blah, just nothing really useful. Set time and date. If you want to flash the system ROM, you can so desire using the CD-ROM or a USB or a USB device if you so have one. Replicated setup is you can basically meaning that the setup you have, the configuration you have to your computer, can be saved to a removable media, or you can have it choose to be restored if you if you need to have a battery replaced. Default setup is the load setup defaults, apply, ignore, and save. Device configuration. We have an 80 gig as the primary, boots Windows, 250 gigs for data, DVD burner, and pretty much it. The serial ATA defaults is pretty much all that stuff, all that all that good stuff. Storage options. Nothing much to say there. DPS self-test, if there is no hard drive detected, this will not show. If there is a hard drive, this will show. It is basically to select a drive to make sure that the, that the hard drive is in healthy condition. The boot order pretty much tells you what you want. Note this one is a little grayed out. If you want to enable it, all you have to do is press F5 and it's enabled. You want to disable that device from booting, press F5. In order for, if you want to boot this being the number one, you hit enter, drag her up, and then you hit F10. And there you go. I'm just going to bring her down completely. And then you hit F10 and accept it. If you do a change and you press escape, it will not save it. It will cancel the changes. Now under security to set up power on, you know, the big deal. Device security. 
pretty much it. Pretty much enables and disables what you want. If you want to boot it from LAN, the system ID. So that's the asset tag, the ownership tag. You can you can, you can pretty much put your name there. Your UID. Uh, this is a drive lock security. I believe this locks your hard drive from booting elsewhere or something. Operating system security. All that good stuff. Set up securely level. Allows the administrator to set the issue. Nah, 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 nah. You got the point. And you got this whole list. <laughs> and you got an arrow down. Holy moly. Let me go pitch down. Wow. That is quite... That is quite the... That's quite the security, man. Wow. Whew. This is big. This is actually bigger than... Almost bigger than the Windows Server Policy Editor or something. Or GPOs. Oh, boy. Oh, that's impressive. So if you're really... Um, if security is your best friend, then this option is your best buddy. Alright, here it is. OS power management tells you basically if you want to suspend. Pretty much hardware power management. Pretty much gets you this. If you want to have an S5 serial ATA. And this, this is fun. This controls how this fan spins at. So I feel, let's say for example, it, it is a hotter temperature outside or you're running, you know, if you want to have the fan spin to get maximum cooling and you don't care about the noise, you crank her up to the complete highest level. Let me get that camera focus and it, yep. Careful, that thing may take off. Nah, just kidding. And if you're someone that really, that a fan annoys you, you just put it to one and it becomes quiet. However, I would recommend it to leave it to three. Normally, it starts at one, but this would actually increase it over time. But I normally want to keep it at three. Four if you're not too, um, not too skeptical about the, you know, the noise. But I would recommend it at three so people don't accept, don't bother with it. But, It also seems to also, um, it seems that this setting also, I just discovered it, it controls also the power supply fan speed too. So anyways, let's go to advance. The power on option options, like memory test, BIOS, onboard devices if you want to enable, disable, and IRQ, IRQ layout, it's up to you. Pretty much, tells you the details. You can pause the video if you want to read them. Anyways, ignore changes and exit, and this one shall boot. Note, I have left out the speaker connections to the fiber acoustic, so you can get the squeaker can that I forgot to mention as well. That is located right there, it's about the size of a P almost. So there it is, Windows 7. You can't say it's a big uh, 5.1 surround, but it does the job, if you know what I mean, as opposed to these. <laughs> these do more of the job. So what's your thoughts? Point of sale? I think it can do so much more. But luckily for this computer, let me just take off the sound there before, before I get a visit from uh, Mr. Professionals, I want to kick my ass or something. Anyways, so that's it for today. That's uh, the review we had. And uh, if you got any questions or comments or anything, just post it down there and I'll reply them. Until next review, though, take good care.